President Biden defending his upcoming trip to Saudi Arabia in a new op-ed in the Washington Post. The president also criticizing President Trump in the op-ed over his move to pull out of the Iran nuclear deal, saying, quote, after my predecessor reneged on a nuclear deal that was working, Iran had passed a law mandating the rapid acceleration of its nuclear program. Then when the last administration sought to condemn Iran for this action in the U.N. Security Council, the United States found itself isolated and alone. Joining me now, former Connecticut senator, United Against Nuclear Iran chairman and former Democrat vice presidential nominee, Joe Lieberman. Uh, great to see you, uh, Senator. You too, Dave. Always. Uh, what do you make of this op-ed from President Biden? Well, I was certainly disappointed with that particular part uh, about the Iran nuclear deal that you have quoted. I mean, first, because uh, uh, I thought it was a terrible deal, and, and I thought President Trump uh, withdrawing the U.S. from it was one of the best things the president did uh, in his foreign policy for the four years he was president. I also think it, it was maybe not the last thing, but one of the last things President Biden should have been saying before this trip to the Middle East, which is really mostly about improving our relations with Saudi Arabia, because uh, the Saudis, and particularly the king and the crown prince, need to be convinced that the U.S. Um, is open-eyed about Iran and really will side with the Saudis, the other Arab countries, and Israel against Iran and not try to uh, negotiate a new deal with Iran. So I, I was disappointed that the president wrote that, and I do think it was a mistake prior to this trip uh, to Saudi Arabia. And, and certainly, Joe Biden on the campaign trail referring to uh, Saudi Arabia, among other things, is a pariah state. Saudi Arabia has quickly turned its back on the United States. Uh, and whether you, you look at, I think it was Jake Sullivan was the author of a plea to OPEC Plus last, uh, August, last August, almost a year ago, begging OPEC Plus, led by Saudi Arabia, to pump more oil. And, you know, cozy, Saudi Arabia cozying up with uh, China, particularly after the invasion by Russia of Ukraine. And part of the problem is, is because the Biden administration has really gone after our energy industry, our energy complex. That's one thing we need Saudi Arabia for now is to pump more oil when, in fact, OPEC Plus as a group is missing its own production target by more than two million barrels a day. How does this play out, Senator? Well, it's right in the middle of, of uh, these uh, discussions that President Biden will have with Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman this week. We, we have had really productive relations with the Saudis since the 1930s, and a lot of it was around uh, oil, obviously. In the, in the most recent period of history, uh, we may have thought that we don't need them anymore, but we obviously do for, the, for oil mm -hmm. and energy, for the reasons that you've said and for the impact on uh, world supply and prices here at home. But, but this Saudi Arabia under uh, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman is different. I, I have come to know him. I've spent time with him. Uh, uh, listen, the Khashoggi thing was, was, was an outrageous act, uh, and he's been condemned for it, and the Saudis have, uh, by President Biden in the U.S. But today, I will tell you that in Saudi Arabia, there's more reform of the internal life, the rights of people there, as well as the Saudis' willingness uh, to work with not only their Arab allies, but with Israel as well. And, and I hope President Biden can build on that. I, I hope he can gain the confidence of mm -hmm. the Saudis that he's with them and not playing with the Iranians, and that the Saudis will take some steps uh, toward the Israelis, which can lead to them joining the Abraham Accords, which was a great step forward, right. uh, obviously, during the uh, Trump administration. Senator, out this morning, early this morning, is a New York Times-Siena College poll that shows 
33 percent of Americans approve of Joe Biden's job as the president, his job performance. The poll also finds, uh, Ari Fleischer called this brutal, 64 percent of Democratic voters want someone other than Biden to be the 2024 Democratic nominee. I want to get your reaction to that. Frankly, I know Joe Biden for decades, and I feel badly for him, but that's uh, the nature of, of politics. This is a tough time, I and mean, we've had the pandemic, we have inflation now, we have the fear of uh, recession, and uh, uh, people are impatient, and it's natural to turn on whoever happens to be the president of the United States. So um, I thought those Democratic numbers were, were particularly jarring and and it says to me that uh, the president has to think about how he wants to spend these next two years of this term and in my opinion one of the big mistakes he's made in this first year and a half is that he's tried too hard to please the leftward base core constituency of the democratic party i would guess a lot of whom are telling the pollsters that they, they don't want him to run again and i think the best thing the president could do uh, to try to get something done in this last two years and have a legacy is to work both with the centrist Democrats and with moderate or independent-minded Republicans. The two great accomplishments in, in legislation of this Biden administration were the bipartisan infrastructure bill and the bipartisan gun safety bill. And uh, the left was unhappy with different parts of both of those, but he negotiated a bipartisan agreement, and I think that's the only way. The other thing I would say, finally, Dagan, he, he shouldn't think, I know this is uh, uh, unrealistic, but he shouldn't think about uh, 2024 at all. He just should try to be the best president he can now and get some things done for the country, whether he runs again or not. One of the big two issues is his age, though, or apparently how his yeah. age is per affecting his behavior, because the American people can see it, and it seems like a lot of the media... Some of the media is catching up to what has been on display from, from since he took office. And the New York Times and Peter Baker wrote a long article about it, kind of preceding this poll being released. It was published on a couple of days ago. But it seems like that they're right. catching up to the fact, well, catching up to what other we've all been watching on the national stage, pointing out that he's already more than a year older than Ronald Reagan was at the end of yeah. Reagan's two terms. <laughs> Right. That's it. I mean, this is a, uh, an experience for us, American people, with a president that's unprecedented. He's already older than our oldest president when he left office. I, I was at the White House on Thursday mm -hmm. for the awarding of the Medal of Freedom to my, my buddy, John McCain. And uh, I, I talked to the president a little bit. He seemed fine. But uh, look, uh, I'm about his age. And uh, uh, I, I, that's why I think he shouldn't, I understand why he doesn't want to be a lame duck, but really, uh, he shouldn't focus on whether he runs or not in 2024. Right. He should just try to get some good things done for the country, working with both parties and, and let the rest take care of itself. R right now, uh, he can only go up, right. and uh, that's going to take a change in course from the way he's conducted his presidency in tough times. For this first year and a half. Even Jimmy Carter started moving toward deregulating parts of industry there, at the end of there his. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Lieberman. That's true. Good to see you.